Ephesians John verse 10 says to the intent that unto principalities and power might be made known the manifold wisdom of God. The embodiments of possibilities are topic tonight. Embodiments of possibilities. Pray in the Holy Ghost one minute. I'm trying to see how much I can relate with also what God is impressing in my heart tonight. Ephesians chapter 3 and 10. The book of Ephesians try to show us God's intention for mankind. The book of Ephesians try to explain how that the salvation of man was a predestined activity. Such that everything God started doing from is in fact we can summarize the whole scriptures. Time will fail me to be able to do that tonight and end the whole Bible in Genesis 18. I won't have much of the time to do that. But every great truth of scripture beyond Genesis 18 to Revelation 22 can be traced back to Genesis chapter 1 to chapter 18. So everything God began to do after Genesis 18 was an act to get man back to himself. We see the story of Joseph in the scripture how that he had an encounter with two men one happened to be the butler and one happened to be the baker and he in the prison with these two young men began to play around the realm of dreams and I their dreams to him he by the mystery and the orchestrations of the ministry of interpreters men who have the ability to interpret destinies Men who can see a family of abalists and know that were people that were ordained to be priests. Men who can see a family of soothsayers and know that the original anointing that was perverted were prophetic graces upon that bloodline. Men who can see a family where they have strange ability to heal using herbs and strange other kinds of spirits and know that they have a mighty healing grace released upon that bloodline but were perverted. Now, such kind of men were men like Joseph. So he saw these two men. Who, they just had a careless dream. And he said to the baker, he said, you shall be killed. Then he said to the butler, you shall be restored. That talks about the communion, which is the mystery of Christ. The bread is broken, healed. The blood is what? Restored. We get into the scripture. We journey even the story of Ruth. And we begin to see that everything that played out there was all about the south of mankind. So that was what Ephesians was trying to say to us. That man has been predestined. And after saying that in chapter 1, chapter 2, talking about the workings of his power, making us understand in Ephesians 2, that we are now seated with Christ in heavenly Chapter 3 and verse 10, still buttressing fact begin to explain to us that God has an intention for this new creation the Bible says the first Adam was a living soul but the second Adam talking about us was a life giving soul and so God was saying to man that the intent why I performed all I did all through the ages is that principalities and powers might understand the multifaceted dimension of God's wisdom. So God intends to do great and mighty things to our life. The flavor of Christianity is the supernatural. What gives Christianity taste? What makes Christianity sweet? What makes it not being boring is the supernatural. When you take supernatural out of Christianity, then we just have a mere religion. So everything about your life is supposed to be extraordinary. That's why you can't say you are ordinary. No! You are an embodiment of great possibilities. Are we together? You are a strange being walking upon the surface of the earth. 
is strengthening. When men see you, they should be happy they've seen answer. When men see you, they should be happy they've seen solution. The Bible speaking in Psalm 74 and verse 20. That cruelty lieth in the dark places of the earth. So wherever you see the oppression of wickedness, wherever you see the manifestation of the Antichrist spirit, the Bible calls those places where the dark places of the earth. So what do we need to take there? Light. Light. The Bible, there is a kind of radiance of light that now works in the inside of us. That this light shines in darkness. And the darkness has no ability to comprehend this light. So when you walk upon the surface of the earth, you are a being of possibility. A bundle of answers and solutions. No wonder David will cry in Psalm 67 verse 1 and 2. He says, show us your mercy, O God, show us your mercy. Be merciful unto us. Send us across the nations of the world that the world might know thy saving hearts to the nations. Send us across the nations of the world. Every encounter with a believer, encounter with the divine. Why? The greater one lives in the inside of us. You are not so to live your life as one that is being defeated, as one that is to be pitied. That's why people don't tell me sorry. You, you can't. You try it, I stop you immediately. Oh, and some of you are looking for it. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. And it had nothing to your bank account. Neither does it cure the edit. That's not the kind of life we are supposed to live. To this intent that unto principalities and powers might be made known the manifold wisdom of God. You see, atmosphere affects belief. That is why the operation of possibilities in Africa is minimal because Africa is too used to impossibility. Africa is too used to dark powers. So everything we see that even God can do, we attribute it to the devil. It's difficult when you live in a setup like Africa to begin to think beyond the box. Some of the things we celebrate in our own continent are things some men have left like 30 to 50 years ago. Atmosphere we find ourselves in affects our relationship with possibilities. So God may appear to you in the vision of the night. He might appear to you in a dream and ask you the same question he asked Ezekiel in Ezekiel 37 as a son of man can this dry bone live? I'm very sure some of you look at it we call them bones so it can live. In fact, in our biology, we read that when bones, you know, have stayed for so long, you, know, you begin to explain some of the things you've read. Change your mind. Change your mind. If we claim that God is the inside of us, if we claim we carry in the inside of us the Spirit of God, then we should see around our life and through our life the manifestations of possibilities. What is difficult to normal men should not be difficult for us. What normal men struggle with, we shouldn't struggle with them. You know, sometimes I'm in my secret place, I am praying and crying. I'm crying not because I can't handle a service, but I'm crying every day and saying, Lord, there are things you have shown to me that the people cannot contain. There are things you have shown to me that if I buy that and manifest some of them, the church, or if not all of them, comprehend them. So it's that pain in the secret place that makes me cry. But how I wish the people can come up what? Why? We've made a mess of Christianity. We've made Christianity a mockery. 
when you struggle with what an average um struggle with? What's the difference? When you when you and a fellow unbeliever receive the same letter of retrenchment in a workplace at the same time, and both of you respond alike, then what is Christianity all about? When you walk with a fellow unbeliever, write to your exam board, and you see your results, discourage him. He saw his discouraging. Both of you responded to that situation the same way. Then what's the difference? Why do you come to church? No, why do you claim you... I, I, I'm trying, like I said, to relate my heart with you. I don't want to live a fake life with God. I don't want to pretend as if it's working when it's not. So our life is supposed to be a bundle of possibility. Everything about you is not supposed to be normal. Do we get that? Everything about you is not supposed to be what? Normal. That's why I pity people that sing this song. Let there be a word of ordinary people. It's not, we are not together. <laughs> ordinary men can no longer survive this world. We are not together. I'm waking up something in the inside of you tonight. That you can get back to the exam board and look at that resource yourself without a statement from me. And say, so I command it to change. And turn your back at it. Waiting to paraventure. Just like Jesus' disciples pointed him to say, Master, see the fig tree. A cosmate of yours can point you some other. And say, see what you said about that situation. It has come to pass. That's Christianity. No! I'm tired of having a bundle of people who are just interested in doing church. And there is nothing real about God showing forth from their lives. No! We can't bet a revival with that kind of nature, that kind of attitude. Oh, I'm happy, yes. God hears me when I call. I'm happy hearing the testimonies. Oh, how I wish that you can do it yourself. How I wish. Are we together? So, how do we release possibilities? Is what I came to share tonight. If by the vantage point of the God inside of us, we are bundled of possibilities. Do you know what can happen when Jesus writes an exam with you? Do you know what can happen when Jesus steps into a city with you? Do you know what can happen when Jesus walk into a family? Should I shock you? Every day you say it and you sing it. That that same Jesus lives in the inside of you. Is he squatting? What I came to wake up in the inside of you. Else you will get to a point. You will be tired of this Christian race. Where you can't place demand on the realities of God in the inside of you. You will get to a point you are frustrated. Why? There will come to a point of your life where you have to take an advantage of something beyond the natural. They will come to that point. So how do we release possibilities? Number one. I owe him genuine honor. When I talk about him tonight, God. Malachi chapter 1 verse 6 to 8. Jesus said to us, when he was teaching his disciples how to pray in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9, that and the disciples of Jesus came to him and said, Master, teach us how to pray. As John also taught his disciples, verse 10. And he said, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father, who are in earth, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. So, bring him kingdom sits on the basis of understanding the fatherhood of God. That's where it starts. When you understand that God is a father, you will produce possibility. 
But if truly is a father, then you owe him genuine honor. Check men that are mindfully used by God. They honor him more than others do. They are willing to go extra mile and do things that others will count as costly just to please this same God. Malachi chapter 1 verse 6 to 8. You must understand that everyone is attracted to honor. That's one of the love language of God and the love language of the Holy Spirit. When you genuinely honor him, he will identify with you in the open. Malachi chapter 1 verse 6 to 8. A son honored his father and a servant his master. If I be a father, where is my honor? This is God placing a demand and say the reason why I don't show up in your life is because you don't honor me as a father. If I be a father, where is my honor? You come to God's presence right in the midst of such a service you call it the house of God. You are chatting. You are watching something on Facebook. Is something wrong with you? You are late for church and you are still strolling and you wonder why it looks like this Christianity is not working for you. See, listen. Where we read earlier, Ephesians 3 and verse 10, he said, to the intent that unto the principalities of power in heavenly places might be made known. By who? By the church, the ecclesia, the manifold wisdom of God. Where is my honor? It was the first thing you do to release possibilities. You owe him what? Genuine honor. If you acknowledge him as father, then genuinely honor him. Genuinely reverence him. Sometimes the way I dread when I am in church, I am shaking on my seat, composing, trying to. You know how you are being kept when you are opportune to meet a great man. You check your shoes if they are properly polished. You check your clothes if they are well ironed. All the kind of interview skills in your life, you begin to think them in splits or seconds. <laughs> you honor him with your words. You honor him with your lifestyle. You honor him with everything you have. And more importantly, the proof of honor is attention. What you give more priority and time to, reduce what you honor most. The proof of honor is attention. It is one thing to be in his presence. It is another thing to give him what? Attention. You know, some of you can set your mouth at the top. You just off it. You have off. That's the mystery of tongues. But you are gone. No! He requires what? Your attention. The moment I pick a tickle, the moment I hear his voice, do you know how I quake? Isaiah said, He said, To whom will I turn? To whom will I look? He said, That man that trembles at my word. To whom will I look? To which man will I put my attention upon? That man that trembles at my word. That trembles. That trembles. That trembles at my word. Number one, we said you will owe him what? Genuine honor. Number two, I owe him the willingness to illustrate my convictions and explore my faith. I owe him the willingness to illustrate my convictions and I explore my faith. Ephesians 3 and verse 20 says, God is able to do much more than we ask or what? Think. <laughs> so if we have such a scripture that dears us, then it's our job to illustrate our conviction and explore our faith. Faith applies what revelation reveals. Faith applies what revelation what 
reveals. If you believe it, you will behave it. Be willing to explore your faith. Look at the young man that came to encourage us in the service. See, start early. That's why I teach the young people. Start early so that you can gain your working experience with God on time. Start early. Experiential knowledge of God is not gained overnight. It is gained over time through consistent work. Early. Make all the mistakes you can make in your preparation. Let your manifestation be flawed. Willing to illustrate your conviction and explore your faith. If you believe what the word says, take it as a step. The Bible is speaking in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32 and 33. He said, What more shall we see? What more shall we see of men like Samson? He said, Who faith subdued kingdom? He quenched the mouth of lions. Who true faith? He says, Certain women refused to have their children for dead. They believed in the God who was able to come back dead to life. Who true faith subdued kingdoms. Be willing, if you want to see possibilities, to illustrate your conviction. And to explore your faith. <laughs> in all you have seen in the scripture. In all you have believed about this God. How many have you put to work? Great servant of God John G. Lee came to South Africa. Have not listened to a man called Alexander the Great. Saw so great exploit wrought through his life. He came to South Africa with the power of God. Believing that the Bible says, if I lay my hands on the sick, they shall recover. Came and began to proclaim that gospel upon that city. Believe the simple word of God. In few months, his wife died. And people began. You say you came to heal people. Your wife have died of the same sickness. But he kept on. I believe the word, not what I see. The word is the greater reality. John 17, 17. He says, sanctify them by thy truth. For your word is truth. The word truth there means reality. Irrespective of what I can see. Yes, that is fact. But your word. The simple definition of a lie is anything God has not said. <laughs> anything God has not said is a lie. And this man kept on and broke into great dimensions of the healing anointing such that he learned healing like an hospital. They have words for different cases. Great servant of God, our bishop, then see that was a heavy pastor said, You can raise the dead and begin to walk on his bicycle through the whole street of Benin. Is there any dead person here? I want to call them back to life. Be willing to illustrate your conviction. The young man said, The money I came with was all I had. But did God disappoint his word? Oh. Oh. Be willing to illustrate your conviction and explore your faith. Are we together? Great servant of God, our Bishop Ben Sidalta, one time was preaching in his service. And the woman, whether she was sleeping or under the anointing, I don't know again. She fell under uh, from the staircase and went down and broke her head, brain out, blood flowing. He shouted, Nobody dies in the church. He commanded the blood to go back and the brain to go back and the head to see. Men who dare to believe the simple word of God. See, nothing suffocates faith like disappointment. And you must become a master over disappointment. Become a master. Don't let it get on your emotions. Did you know how many people I prayed for that never got the result or got healed before I start seeing miracles? Do you know how many years I've been praying and speaking over people and it never came to pass before God chose to honor my faith? And they say, sir, you just said a word. 
he just said the word. Yeah, my brother, he paid. A daughter of mine, her mom is a commissioner in Benue State. The mom was being attacked. Picked a song in Delic worship. And played it. The demons ran. Do you know how many of my songs they played before? Nothing happened. Did you want to press the person anymore? Wow! Your faith will be tried and tested to be trusted. God must know you are not a gambler. You are not put 20 chop 40. No! Do you know how many years I paid my tithe before I began to see a return on it? You just, you just said, come on, drop your first tithe and you're angry the next week. He said, I will not drop. Nothing came back. I gave my life to a point. One of my friends, when we went to a meeting again, we have given all we had. The man of God said, and God told Abraham, bring your Isaac. We stand and looked and said, there's no Isaac again. We have finished all the Isaac we have. And the man of God, and see if God will not surprise you. I swear, I chopped suffering. Surprise where? Everybody I was walking through the street, everybody, I, is this the person that will give me money? And it will cost men to give to you. I was looking at every man. Nothing happened. But we didn't stop. We believed this word. We were willing to risk our faith. I said the major reason, Genesis 13 and verse 17. Genesis 13, 17. The Bible says that God wanted to play around the manifestations of possibilities with Abraham. Do you know what he did first? He first expanded his mind. And he told Abraham, he said, look toward the north, the south, the west, that's verse 15, 16. He said, and the east. He said, every land you see around, I give them to you for an inheritance. Abraham was still looking, not understanding. Me? He said, okay, Abraham, walk through the length in verse 17. Walk through the length and the breadth of this earth. It is for a mortal man to walk through the length and the breadth of the earth. Did he actually do it? Yes. How? He did it in his mind. God wanted to expand his capacity to believe. Believe this God. Believe this God. Every form of possibilities you see in my life today is because I chose to illustrate my conviction and to explore my faith. I saw the word say he can do exceedingly, abundantly. One time we needed money crazily. And I was reading a book like a mighty wind mentari, the Indonesia revival. The greatest revival that I ever know of. So I, the accountant, came to the office. We needed money to buy. I forgot about that. I said, count the money. She told me the amount. And we needed times three of it. So I remember all the things I read in the book. I said, count it again. She counted it again. The money doubled. I said, count it again. She counted it. It tripled. I chose to illustrate my faith. I chose to illustrate my faith. Do you know, you know, some of my children right now think it's as easy as they see me do it. Do you know how many rain I have said you will not find the team beat me? If I saw them came with ice block. They say, sir, the rain will fall. I said, I stand on my God. Rain will not fall. I shot the air with as if they open it. But you are so blessed. I was all blessed with me. But today I can look at the sky no matter how thick it is and say water moves. And instantly you see things. Be willing. That's how you produce possibilities. The Bible says, and we have a God, Romans 4, 17, who collects those things that be not. As Christianity is all about the supernatural. I can look at my bank account and say, Money, I call you into this account. I put your mouth to talk. I go back to my room. I look at the food stores and say, This grow, rice grow, multiply. Why? I saw Jesus did the same. The Bible says, He lifted it and gave thanks. And five loaves of bread and two fish is fed five thousand. I have a model I look up to. If I do it the first time, I didn't get results. Does that mean Jesus is wrong? I keep doing till I see the result. That's the sign that I believe the word. 
be let your Christianity not be about coming to church. They call you say somebody in your department is sick. Get an apostle of light for your healing and miracle. Get there. The Bible says you are a life giving what spirit. So I speak life. Number three. How do we produce possibilities? Are we getting blessed tonight? I owe him absolute commitment. I owe him absolute commitment. If I want him to show forth in my life and release his possibility, then I must be absolutely committed to him. What does it mean? I can't follow him double-mindedly. I can't have two masters at the same time. That's what the Bible says. I can't do Christianity one leg in, one leg out. I can't be practicing holiness at the same time in the secret. My life is dirty. I, I will try to do what I see to work. Does it mean this God is fake? No. You have a problem. Absolute commitment. <laughs> see, with such a consciousness, I don't struggle in my decision. I know what controls it. Who oh, should I please for? This was the life of the apostles. One time they were summoned and beaten with strips and said, Don't preach in the name of that man again. And they looked at them, I bought to eyeball and said, Look at us. So we obey men than to obey God. I don't struggle with my decisions. I know who comes first in everything. I know who my allegiance is to. So once it is something that will not please him, I don't think too much about it. And some of you, the uncles will call you and say, I have a job for you. But the problem there is, you have to change your date of birth. And, and you are praying about it. <laughs> what kind of Christian are we manifesting? It does, does that meet a prayer point? You are done with that, and you look at the person as me. Possibilities refuse to be summoned. Why? The Bible says in Second Corinthians, he said, verse six, ten six. He said, and ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is complete so when you disobey what is above you what you are on that disobeys you pray in the holy ghost let me give you the number four very sharply i you may lifestyle if i want to see possibilities i owe him a lifestyle of risk <laughs> When I see challenging situations, I must be willing to stick it my confidence on him. A lifestyle of risk. The three Hebrew boys say, O oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, be it known to you that even if the God that we serve won't save us, we will still that is risk. You don't know what I took to this place is risk. Left all my scholarships, job with nothing to come and start. This is not risk as a first son. It's risk. There was nothing I saw that gave me hope. Nothing that I saw that gave me hope. I saw was discouragement. Every first meeting we were 13. Everything was discouraging. <laughs> you know, one time I was watching Great Servant of God, the man that I've had the highest amount of impact in my life. Last pastor Chris Rakilome. I followed him early from life at the age of seven. All my life. If I fought for him. A very small at the age of I think nine or eight. And you know, that's when they scattered this atmosphere of miracles thing. And one of my friends said to me, he used to blow powder. I beat him. Beat that. 
<laughs> I, I was watching him one time. I see another video on my on my laptop. He came to the service and held his tab. And while he came out of the pulpit to preach, he said, "Oh, I forgot my my stick, whatever type of thing you call it." And he said, "Oh, angels of God, bring it for me." Instantly, this just disappeared like this. Do you hear what I said? And as he said, angels of God, the thing disappeared into the pocket. And he laughed. He said, oh, sorry. I, I didn't know I was in front of you. He said, there are things God has shown to us. We can't even do it for you. Some of you You run out of time. Why? Africa is too used to impossibility. Look at the way somebody will travel abroad and bring one just little technology thing for you. Honestly, so oh, but American wonder. Hey. That's what people are playing with at assignment in my two in China. <laughs> the answer you are holding is somebody's assignment from my one in China. One time, my mentor, Apostle John Cecilia, he was having a meeting, and by prophetic inclination, he called a woman. He said, Come, and she came. He said, You came here for a challenge. She said, Yes. He said, let me tell you your problem. Every of your documents you have had from birth, she has masters up to PhD. All are missing. It's you just are we together? Yeah. So he looked at her, he said, Let's pray. He said, Everybody that have a, a folder, a bag in church, lift it up. Angels of God, wherever those documents are across the nations of the world. Put them in those bags. People were seeing the human documents in their bags. That's the beauty. That's the beauty of Christianity. The Bible is speaking in Matthew chapter 4, talking about the birth of Jesus. He said, Those that sat in darkness have seen a great light. At his appearance, what they have seen is a bundle of possibilities. Bundle. When men see you, what comes upon their faces? Is it smiles? And say, final solution have come. I have met a child. I have met a son of God. Don't do church. It won't help you. Oh! I must see the reality of Christianity through my life. It must be seen in my life that this God is real. God is not dead. Tell your neighbor, God is not dead. That's why my emphasis is not to blow up spiritual truths to you, but to teach you what to do to align to Him and release possibilities. Align to Him and release possibilities. Be willing to illustrate your conviction and explore your faith. Really. Some of the greatest of the world, of all that live, never even went to school. They didn't have the kind of and degree you had. All they have simple belief in God. Sometimes too much of knowledge can become your problem. That's why they said, old cheese in crypto analyzing chart, new bees, they bought, they bought this. Too much of knowledge. <laughs> Somebody entered today has bought the, you analyze it. There's pool, there's beer. <laughs> Nobody is interested in that. Now who now who passed my notebook? Is that what they say? Produce results. Believe God. Say the, the ecclesia, the, you know the mystery of Mia, the mystery of what is it all about? Believe the simple word, you see. Believe the that's why I sang that song when we walk with the Lord in the light of this world. What a glory sheds on our way when we do his good will. He abides with us still, and to those who we trust and obey, who we trust him and obey. And I told you I have produced certain things in my life. I watch great God servants. 
prophet who by angel commanding money to appear. I see people saying, Allah is entering my life. I say, really? If this thing be so, let me make a summon upon this same God. I, I can't even remember the first service. I said, everybody pick your phones, pick your ATMs. I command Allah coming. Next service, nobody testified. <laughs> I said, oh boy. Uh, Next service again. Pick your phone. Pick your ATMs. Miracle or not? Nobody. I kept doing it till one service. It looks as if it was jazz. People were running out. I said, it has come. He honored my faith. He honored my faith. He honored my faith. If you want to last in God, learn how to manage disappointments. Learn it. I have seen too many things that have the capacity to weigh me down and discover. Yet I hope, you know, David said, My soul, what are thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. Sometimes you have to make such declaration to yourself. Say, hope thou in God. The first meeting where I commanded Eps to disappear. Should I tell the story? You remember the meeting when that table first meeting? I heard the story of the great man of God. The man I came to him and said, Sir, I've been applying for visa and they've refused to give me. Say, get me a plain sheet of paper. The man got a plain sheet of paper. He laid his hands and said, I command the visa to appear. It appeared. He said, You go. What? So I came to that service. I was praying in the meeting. I think you remember. First meeting. Suddenly, the Holy Ghost blew over me. I said, I command us to disappear. The next day, was it the next day? The young man was going to. He said, "Sandy thing disappeared." I said, "It has come." In an ocean, can't even be scared. I am not doing it the first time. I've seen it happen over and over again. Embodiment, self possible. I came to do something to your inside. Some of you will leave this next two meetings. You will be wondering where is doubt in my life. You'll be looking for it. You'll be asking yourself, where is doubt in my life? Lift up your hands and pray tonight. Talk to God, talk to God, talk to God. You heard a sermon tonight. I said your life should not end in church. Don't do Christianity by just coming to service, going home. No! That's not what Christianity is all about. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Listen, God wants to do great things to your life. He said to this intent that He will make known to the church the manifold wisdom of God. He derives pleasure in seeing that he wrought great and mighty miracles through your life. Don't limit him. Don't set a limitation on God. Believe God for anything. And when Mary said, how shall this be? Luke 1, 37. He said, nothing is impossible for God. Nothing. You can get two words from nothing, that is no and thing. The word no thing means rema. It means a rema word carries in itself the capacity to perform. Nothing is impossible for oh God. Never you set a limitation on God. Yes, indeed. See, that's why you're emphasizing on truth. Don't limit God. One time, one of my father and the faith was praying. They were so in desperate need for money. Praying to a point the ceiling busted open. Ghana must go fed with money. Nothing. You know your problem is what have you even listened to? 
a young man walked to me one of the servants. He said, sir, is it that there is no doubt in your life? I started laughing. <laughs> what you constantly behold, you gradually become. Atmospheres are influential. When you stay with a giant, you will become a giant overnight. Atmospheres are influential. What have you subject your mind to believe? What is your source of inspiration? What is your source of motivation? What is your source of information? What do you hear? What are the kind of things you hear? They matter a lot. What kind of atmosphere do you relate with? Can impact in you fear and impact in you faith. Let it not end in this teaching tonight. Go back home and do something. Is that okay? In two minutes, I give you their permission. Any kind of situation you have a need, a desire, say it to God now. Command things to be. Listen, 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 listen. A friend of mine said to me, he was just about a father of us. They wanted to build a church. Struggling, struggling, struggling to gather the money because the church member does not look like it. So one time he was coming from administration with his wife from Bida and head in the inside of the car. He collects those things that be not as though they were. He went home, declared a one month prayer and fasting program, vigil every night, and they begin to call money to come. Call men and blocks. After they finished one month, a man called them. He said, Ah, oh, man of God, I heard you were about to build. Why didn't you tell me? You will see my hand. Why had 100 million? As he came out of the church, it's a very small place. In fact, where the first church is, is the gate. The first church is the gate now. Came out inspecting the place. This is a man that bought buildings and pulled them down. Came out and was investigating. He said, Analogy was passing through. And said, Pastor, uh, what are you doing? He said, to build. He said, You didn't tell us, you will see my hand. By evening, 100 million. Next day, another man called, Man of God, you are building. You didn't tell me. He said, You will see my hand. Why are the 900 million and said to him, Every cement that will be needed for this building to be complete, I provide. The first time they sent five trailers of them with this cement, he collects those things that be not. Listen, listen, listen. He collects those things that be not. Who are we talking about? Who is your father? Behave like him. He said he collects those things that be not as though they were. <laughs> I want something to enter into you. He collects those things that be not as though they were. Lift up your voice and pray tonight. In Jesus. Amen. How many of you believe if I tell you whatever you ask God will do it? You believe right? See. You are sick in your body? Command it to get out. Come next week miracle service for anything. It will be an impartation service. An impartation of faith. You have somebody in your family? Not the child? Command the world open. Somebody is jobless? Must to come. Whatever is a burden, make decrease, make decrease. How those things that be not, we are by the power of the Holy Ghost, 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 by the power of the Holy Ghost. I will speak a word over what you have.
if what I teach you does not work since I have followed this God in vain I had almost a million naira about two weeks ago during my devotion with my wife I said give me your hand Father, within the next seven days I call a million to come did he come on in? even though she said it was because she held my hands what I teach you is the same thing I do are we together? the same thing I put to work I pray for you tonight whatever you have made a decree upon whatever you have made a decree upon I decree now Jesus Christ of Nazareth within the next seven days may God make them happen 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 can you pray one prayer? Can you pray one prayer? Say, oh God, oh God, push authority upon my mouth. Your authority upon my life. That's what I hear God say to me now. Oh God, oh God, put your authority upon my mouth. Put your authority upon my life. Whatever I make be a whatever I make a decree come upon. to pass. Come to pass. Raise your voice and pray to me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever you have decreed, I command them to happen. I command them to happen. I command them to happen. In the name of Jesus, may the heavens be open over your life. May the heavens be open over your life. May the heavens be open over your life. May your words never fall to the ground. May your words never fall to the ground. In the name of Jesus. Thank him, thank him. How many of you want to testify next week? You want to test? I decree in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Concentrate. Within the next seven days, may God do in your life, in your family, in your health, in your finance, in your career, in the life of your extended family, what you keep to testify in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I command a miracle to occur Jesus let the angels of God move right now in the name of Jesus Lord bless and keep you. I saw lumps disappear. I just see lumps disappear. I've seen the angels of God moving across the crowd. I pray for you. May God give you to testify. The Bible says, Lord, be merciful to us that thy salvation may be made known to them that by the way you treat us people will understand your nature and character that's what David was praying there by the way you treat us people should understand your nature and your character 
I pray for you. May God surround your life with His goodness. May God surround your life with testimonies. May God wrought His miracles, signs and wonders in your life, in your family, in your career, in your health, in your finances. In the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord cause His face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious. The light of, the light of His countenance upon you. The Lord is peace. It is well with you. It is well with you. It is well with you. In Jesus' name we pray.